Hey designers, it's Tammy from SketchUp for Interior Designers and today I want to show you how to take uh, the image on the left to the uh, drawing on the right. You can tell that the the painting, the image of the painting on the left is taken at an angle. It's not taken from straight on and we're going to use that picture to create a piece of artwork in SketchUp that you see on the right. The one on the right is nice and flat and uh, and it looks not distorted. So we don't need any other program other than SketchUp to kind of straighten this out a bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw in this living room here. It's, I've got like a basic start to a living room and I'm just gonna draw it on this wall here. And I've got my select tool out and I wanna point one thing out before I get started on drawing this artwork is that when I select my walls, they have a wrapper around them. They're already grouped together. So when I draw the artwork on top of them, it's not gonna stick to the wall. Um, if I hadn't grouped my walls, if they were just loose geometry, and I draw my artwork on top of it, it might cause some issues down the line when I start moving around that artwork or erasing it. I don't wanna cut a hole in the wall, things like that. So just to note, be sure that what you're drawing on top of is part of a group. Okay. So I'm going to get my rectangle tool, R for rectangle, and this piece of art is uh, 30 by 24 inches. So I'm going to just get my rectangle started here, and I am going to type 30 comma 24 enter. All right, so this is going to be my piece of art, and you can see, you probably have experienced this before, and you may know what this is, we're seeing some Z fighting, and that's when two faces are on the exact same plane, um, they're probably in different groups, in this case, this is a group, and this is loose, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that forward just a bit, um, but first, I'd like to give it a little bit of a frame, so I'm going to hit my offset tool, and I'm gonna offset it out, let's say three inches. We'll give it a three inch frame. Okay, so I'm gonna pull the frame forward. Uh, let's pull it forward half an inch, 0.5. And then I'm just gonna pull this face forward a quarter of an inch. And that is just simply, you know, to pull it off the wall so I don't get that Z fighting. So I pulled that forward quarter of an inch. All right, so now I've got that nice and a good start. I'm gonna triple click so that I can grab all of this loose geometry and make it a group. So right click, make group. Okay, so now I'm gonna put my image here and I may add some nice wood tones or uh, maybe just the color around the frame. Okay, so I need to go ahead and double click into this group with my select tool so that I have access to this face because that's where I am going to put my image. So I have access to it. I can see that I can select the face. I'm gonna to go to File, Import, and I'm gonna import that picture of that ocean. Okay, so I need to find the image. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the image, and under Options, if you're not seeing your options here below, you'll want to go ahead and click Options there, and make sure that you are using it as a texture. If Use as Image is clicked, this is not gonna work. We wanna make sure that we're applying it as a texture. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and hit import. And it's gonna be attached to my cursor. So I just need to click on the face once and then bring my cursor upwards and click again. So I'm just kind of throwing it on the face there. I'm not really doing much as far as um, situating it yet. I'm just kind of getting the texture in the drawing. So I'm going to right click on that face that I just applied it to and go down to texture position. So if you're not seeing right click texture position, then you may have applied it as an image and not as a texture. You may want to back out and make sure that that use as uh, texture is clicked. So now I can click and drag and situate my image and I can see that that's not quite what I'm going for. That's not going to, it's not going to not gonna cut it. So I'm gonna right click again, texture position, and you're gonna see these pins, these colored pins. Um, you may have used this one before. If you click and drag, this one will scale it up a bit, or you can rotate it. But in this case, what I'd like to do is right click again, and we're gonna uncheck fixed pins. And now we're 
presented with these little white pins here. So I'm going to pick this up by clicking and releasing, not clicking and dragging, but uh, click and release. And I'm going to click and release to set it back down on the corner of click and release and click and release on the corner of my artwork and make sure that you're not clicking and dragging. It's not going to function the same way if you click and drag at this point. So we're picking up and putting it down on all of the corners here. This one might be a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now we're ready to click and drag. So I'm going to click and drag and place this right into the corner there and right into the corner there. And it may work better if I hadn't extruded or pulled the frame out a little bit already because then I can get to that corner there, but that's fine. In the future, I'd probably leave the, uh, the frame flush with the face until I am all done with this action. But what I'm looking for are these end points. I think I got most of them. This one could go a little bit further, but I want to get all the way if I want it to be nice and perfect. All right, so now I can either right click and choose done or I can hit enter and set that into place. So you can see that that is much better looking than that distorted image of what we were looking at before. And now I can double click and I can apply uh, color to this frame. And I think what I'll do is I'll hit my B for bucket and I'm just going to use my color picker tool. And I think I'll pick a nice color from here and um, apply it to the frame. Um, instead of applying it to just this face and kind of working my way through, I'm going to right click and choose select connected faces so that I get all of these faces here and on the sides, and things like that. So now I can select the color and apply it. So I'm happy with the way that looks. And um, yeah, and that's how you would fix a distorted image that was taken at an angle, all done native within SketchUp.